It's All Things Considered. I'm member-supported Hawaii Public Radio, HPR1, and I'm Dave Lawrence. Hope you're having a good afternoon. Henry Rollins returning to the islands, pioneering former singer of Black Flag, kicking off a unique spoken word tour here in Honolulu, September 6th, Hawaiian Bryant's. And we're really lucky to talk to him ahead of this tour of state capitals called Capitalism. And we'll hear about how his international travel experiences constantly provide reflection. One of the best ways to assess America is to look at it from afar and to evaluate it by how it washes up on other shores. And so when you see what the America looks like in Cambodia, in Thailand, in Vietnam, in Honduras... It doesn't make you say, oh, America's bad, you know, not at all. It's just that it lets you understand the kind of powerhouse it is, the influential force in the world that it is. America really does dictate how a lot of the world comports itself, not always for good. There's going to be good and bad in any situation or scenario. And I never really understood that until I got outside of America and got outside of the normal places I would go and getting into the African continent or going to the Middle East or going all over Southeast Asia, like into Burma, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, going into places like Israel and Egypt are very, very informative. Is there a particular story or experience where there's some humility that you've gotten personally from one of these trips? Well, it's continual. I mean, I would love to think it's like one visit you would kind of be cured of your Western, whatever it is, but it's a constant reminder. Like I go back there to go get my chops rebusted. You think it's going to stick. You come back and you have to kind of get Africanized again. It takes about 72 hours to get properly broken in. And then you're like, oh, that's right. And a little bit of it comes back. But continually, just your very basic ideas of things are challenged. Morality 101 things that you get pulled into on any given moment. Same thing in parts of India. I mean, I've been to India several times and spent quite a bit of time there. And there's another place where you are really forced to deal with very elemental, basic ground floor ideas that you have about yourself, about people. And for me, at least, this is a very worthwhile book to get the lessons from as often as possible. It's made me, I think, a better person. It's made me more generous, more patient, and way more aware of things. You think you're aware of things, and then you come back from one of these trips, and you're like, okay. Just the things we take for granted, the basic things. There's so many lessons I can hear. it. When you go take a shower, as some people do, it's the place where they work on their singing. It's the place where they meditate. It's the place where they, you know, kind of stand there for a minute because the water does feel very nice. Then you go to an environment where there's no running water for like five days to where, you know, your shower or your bath is a bucket of muddy water. And that was parts of southern Sudan, where you look at it and go, well, no. (laughs) And, And then you realize that shower that you take is this gratuitous exercise in not exactly waste of water, but you realize your concept of water is quite different than the person, the woman who's walking four miles each way to a semi-polluted well to fill up two jerry cans of multiple gallons of water that she's going to carry all the way back to use up very quickly on her children and her family for the cooking, some washing, and then the next day, most of her day is that daily journey with the water where you and I, we go to any tap and just turn it on. How is it that you decide to channel into each of these things? I like to do things I can really hurl myself into because I like to be busy about seven days a week. It's better for my brain. (laughs) I don't believe really in downtime. It just doesn't serve me very well. If I'm not active, I get very depressed very quickly. So I'd rather be engaged. Have you mellowed at all as you've gotten older? No, uh, no. I mean, I live better than I used to as far as day to day, and then I really don't worry about paying the rent or eating. I think I got it covered. But the travel and the awareness that I am able to engage in now makes me very angry civically in that you see stuff that's just not right. You see good people that are just, they shouldn't be getting treated like that. And so to not be angry about it, to not want to turn that around you're now officially part of the problem. You can't count yourself as part of the solution if you're going to be cool with that. Or, I'm just trying to get along. Well, that's really not good enough anymore. 
I think one needs to work harder to make it better. You still are the man. I give you a high five, and I hope you had fun talking today. Oh, I absolutely did, man. You made it very easy. I appreciate it. Rise above.